Alright, we're back here with, I guess, part two. Alright, recap. We, you know, new bearings, rod bearings. This is a couple days later. My back's been messed up. Just, you know, tired. Overdoing it, but we're back. Got this cover on our oil dipstick. Add a little Honda Bond. I've never had any luck on getting these gaskets to stick, so we're gonna try a little Honda Bond and I gotta get this all stuff cleaned up, but we're getting there. Hopefully I'll have this done today. So to be continued. Alright, we pretty much got both our surfaces clean and dry. Wired wheeled all the old stuff off. And uh we're gonna put a little bit of Honda Bond on both sides of the gaskets. And when you're doing oil pan gasket, you're gonna to want to use this right here, this little one. Cause you, my problem is I always over tighten them, and the fucking gasket always leaks. So we're probably gonna end up using a little Loctite on the thread on the threads of these oil pan vaults, and we're barely just gonna snug them up, cause we don't want this thing to leak. And I'm used to doing this inside the car on my back, and it's a pain in the ass. So we're gonna try to take our time with this and get it right. All right, we got our pan on and we barely got these tight just enough for them to you know snug on the gasket and then I you don't have to but after that I took a bead a regular silicone and just went around the just went around it you know you ain't got to you ain't got to putty it up you know you got a 50 50 chance this thing's gonna leak or not so you know, we'll continue on all right we're getting our ARP head studs cleaned out that's a Mazda Miata ARP head stud Part number two one eight four seven zero three, and uh, gets torqued down to ninety foot pounds, and you know three different sequences like thirty, sixty, ninety, and you know the crisscross pattern, boom, 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 just like Honda. But uh, yeah, we'll get that started here in just a minute. Hi, right, we pretty much just threw the alternator on there, front new front bracket that isn't cut up, and. Uh, Grinding out the busy moto gasket a little bit for the B16 intake manifold. Unfortunately, the head I've been porting and polishing on uh, inside the exhaust chambers, there's like a hair, two little hairline cracks, and it's probably not not no big deal. But I'm gonna wait to have that pressure tested and all that. So I guess I'm gonna throw my original head back on and just send it full send to be continued. All right, we got our head torqued down with the ARP head studs, you know, three increments of 30, you know, 30, 60, 90, and that takes a, you know, half inch, 12 point socket. So we're going to continue on. All right, guys, here's a little information I forgot to add about the pistons and rod bolts. Well, the rod bolts I'm using are ARP rod bolts, part number 2086001. Thing like B16, B18 ARP rod bolts, <clears throat> and when you um when you do your rings, it's hard for me. You got your, damn it, I'm gonna get help one day. But you got your piston pin right here. Like you want to say your top compression ring, boom down here. Second ring up in this area, and your oil ring in your two slots. Boom, boom. You know, just check your factory manual. I forgot to add that in there, but you don't want the gaps to line up. And let's see. oh oh here here's here's a pro tip here's a pro tip that's gonna save you a couple bucks that not too many people know about because I did a lot of ton of research. You want your Honda OEM timing belt and you don't want to pay that high ass ninety six to or uh, eighty six to eighty nine a cord or, or prelude prices. This is a hundred eight tooth belt and after doing the research, nineteen eighty five Honda Accord. You can find these for a good deal for OEM Honda belt and not pay that high ass price for the third gen Accord or second gen Prelude. So, you know, keep that in mind. There's your part number on that. 14400-PC60042. That's the 85 Honda Accord OEM timing belt. 108 teeth. Same as the third gen and Prelude. All right, here's my next steps. There's many different ways you can do this. I, all right, I took my seal, packed it full of grease, slid it on the cam, 
<clears throat> went ahead and slid the cam gear evolution air evolution industry cam gear these are the same people that make busy motos cam gear and uh, of course you know with everything you can't see but the lines line up with the head and how you know you got your crank lined up is let's see if we can get it you see this little notch right here if you look uh, try to get a focus if you look up there's a little dot right there that's how we know we got the crank lined up with top dead center and now you know you could put your valve train in or you can go ahead and try to slide your timing belt on there's many different ways and the way I broke this uh, this pulley originally I had to pay somebody to come with a giant machine gun to break it loose but uh, this time I end up hooking a chain to this you know tighten the chain down then a bolt to the pulley and a breaker bar it bent the hell out of the chain and shit, but it, it came loose. All right, to be continued. All right, and before we set our valve assembly in place, I'd like to go ahead and just take some oil and just lube the hell out of this. And we'll set our uh, valve train assembly in place, torque that down, and we'll put our belt on. Oh, and before I set it in the place, I like to loosen all the, all the valve lifters completely loose because we're going to be doing valve lash here in just a minute. Alright guys, then you just slide your timing belt on. It can be a little tricky and time consuming. Just take your time with it. It may take a lot of cussing to get it on there, but I notice for me is um, I like to get this part of the belt and this part of the pulley that I know the teeth groove are lined up. And I'll interlace it through here in the bottom. And uh, I'll leave this part loose. I'll actually run it through I'll actually run it through here and then I'll kind of kind of pull on the belt and just work it up on there but yeah just take your time you know it's a little tough especially if it's a new belt so just take your time with that part and there's a couple things I didn't do on this rebuild because I just recently did it was you know the water pump the water pump gasket and the uh, the oil pump and uh, inside the oil pump you know, you take it apart, and there's like an O-ring on the on the inside with the line through it. On the back side, there's another O-ring, which you'll want to do that once you get that all out and rebuilt. I just recently did that. Same with your oil filter uh, base gasket. You want also want to replace that too. I'm trying to, you know, I done recently redid all these, so I'm not trying to break stuff loose. You know, I'm I'm already probably three hundred and fifty dollars into gaskets and the damn pistons and rods just to try to bring this thing back to life so you know I'm trying to and motor oil and coolant and all that so I'm trying to you know save extra thirty bucks which I don't have I'm down to pennies trying to get this thing back together and our next step is uh, remove the crank pulley uh, bolt and this right here you want the, the rounded edge to go towards the belt so, as you see on the back side one, it holds the belt in place. Make sure that goes on there. We'll put our lower uh, crank, uh, we'll put our lower cover on. We'll bolt that all up and go from there. All right, we put our lower timing cover on. We put our little key in, slid our pulley on. Just snug this up. It's 2 a.m. so I can't put my impact on. Just <laughs> Um, we put our water pump pulley on just just snugged it up. We can't tighten that up yet We slid our top timing cover on and uh, That's gonna conclude uh, part two Part three I'll show you how to tighten up the tight uh, tensioner Timing belt tensioner. We'll do valve lash and we'll finish up everything and hopefully put it in the car To be continued Thank everybody for uh, subscribing and watching stay tuned